Hello students and welcome to Lesson 5 of Unit 5. In this lesson we are going to look at like terms on opposite sides of the equation. And our essential question is, how can I solve an equation that contains like terms on opposite sides? And to help you remember that we will be eliminating one of the terms, I want you to think about it like Christmas Day and getting two of the same item that you were requesting. So for instance, if you got two of the same movie, what would you do with one of them? You would return it to the store or eliminate it from your collection so that there was only one of them. And that's kind of what we're going to be doing today as we work on eliminating one of the terms from one of the sides. To review, in our last lesson we talked about how we solve equations as first simplifying, which means distribute if we have any, combine like terms on the same side if we have any, and today we're going to add eliminate like terms on opposite sides. Then after we have simplified these three situations, we can then use inverse operations to isolate the variable, and that's where you can create your do and undo chart. You cannot create your do and undo chart until the simplification has been completed. So, so to review, like terms are terms with the same variable and the same exponent. So for example, what are the like terms in this expression? This is just an expression. Well here we would have 4x, and notice we're going to grab the sign in front, and negative 3x, we would have positive 9y and negative 5y. We'd also have positive 1 and negative 10. Notice constants are like terms, don't forget that. Now like terms can be on the same side or on opposite sides, but you could also have no like terms or both types of like terms. So I want to look at some equations and decide do they have like terms and if so what type do they have. So here's our first equation. If we look at this equation as being two sides we can see that we have like terms here and here and since they're on opposite sides of the equation we would classify that as like terms on opposite sides. Here's another equation. Here we have like terms of 14y and negative 2y, and if you notice where the equal size sign is, they are also on opposite sides. So that's another example of like terms on opposite sides, which is what we're going to work with today. If you look at this equation, we have 17 times x equals 51. Yes, constants are like terms, but in this case, this is just a one-step equation. We would need to divide each side by 17, so we consider that to have no like terms. You can just go ahead and use inverse operations to isolate that variable. Here, if you look at where the equal sign is, and you identify your like terms of 19x and negative 4x, you can see that they're both on the same side. So this is an example of like terms on the same side. And last, we have this example. If you look at where the equal sign is and identify like terms, we have 16x, negative 8x, and positive 2x. These two are on the same side but they are opposite to this, which makes it also like terms on opposite sides. So in this equation, we actually have both types of like terms. Now, remember, when like terms are on the same side, such as this equation, we're going to combine those like terms. We would say 19x minus 4x makes 15x. We would combine those like terms together. What we're going to learn to do today is, when we have like terms on opposite sides, we will eliminate terms until only one of the variable remains. So for instance, we will either eliminate the 9x or eliminate the 15x, so that there's only one x in our problem. So let's look at an example of how to do that, and, and until you get the hang of it, I want you to draw that line down the center. 
Okay, so we have like terms here, which is 2a, and here, which is 3a. Notice they are on opposite sides of the equation, so we're going to have to eliminate one of them. Well, how do you get rid of positive 2a? Well, you take 2a away. Then we'd have positive 2a minus 2a make 0, and 0 plus 3 is just 3. So we eliminated a from the left side of the equation. But remember, what we do to one side, we have to do to the other. So to subtract 2a from this side, 3a minus 2a makes 1a, or just a. So a is equal to 3 in this equation. The only value of the variable that could make this equation true is 3. And you can still check your, your solution. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 plus 3 is 9. 3 times 3 is 9, so we see that both sides are equal to 9, which makes this the, the constant that will make that equation true. All right, now let's look at this equation. Draw on that line down the center until you get the hang of this. You have 4v on this side and positive, nine, sorry, positive 7v on the right side. Since we have like terms on opposite sides, we will have to eliminate one of those. I prefer to eliminate the one with the lesser value because then I'm going to avoid negatives most of the time. So in this example, I need to subtract 4v because positive 4v minus 4v makes 0, which leaves me with just 0 minus 7 or negative 7. But if I subtract 4x, sorry, if I subtract 4v from this side, I need to subtract 4v from this side. Bring the 5 down. Positive 7v minus 4v makes positive 3v. If you look at our new equation, which has an equal value to the original equation, we now only have the variable one time in our entire equation. Now we can create a do and undo chart since this is a two-step equation. If I knew what v was, I'd have to multiply it by positive 3, so I'll multiply by 3, and I'd have to add 5 since this is a positive 5. To undo that, I'd have to subtract 5 and divide by 3. So we'd subtract 5 from each side, so that's the first step in our do and undo chart. 5 minus 5 makes 0, 0 plus 3v is just 3v. Negative 7 and negative 5 make negative 12. Divide each side by 3, because that's the second step in our undo chart. 3 divided by 3 makes 1. 1 times v is just v. Negative 12 divided by 3 is negative 4. So the solution to this equation is negative 4. That is the only value of the variable that will make that equation true. Again, in this equation, we have like terms on opposite sides, 4x and x. Now, most of the time, I would want to eliminate the lesser term. So I'll go ahead and do that to show you what, that, what to write when you eliminate everything from a side. So I have x. To get rid of x, we have to take x away x minus x makes 0, and that's the only thing on this side of the equation, so you have to write 0 there, so it equals 0. If we subtract x from this side, we have to subtract x from this side. 4x minus x makes 3x, and bring down the plus 6. So we have 3x plus 6 equals 0. Eliminate the constant. Positive 6 minus 6 makes 0. So we have 3x plus 0, or just 3x, equals negative 6. Divide each side by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 1 times x is x. Negative 6 divided by 3 is negative 2. So the value of the variable that will make this equation true is negative 2. Now, remember, simplify actually has three parts. So we're going to start looking at some combinations now. To simplify, we first have to do the distributive property if we see it. Does this equation have the distributive property? Yes. Here we need to distribute 3 
to each term inside the parentheses. So 3 times 3b would make 9b. 3 times negative 2, don't forget to grab that sign in front, 3 times negative 2 makes negative 6, and that's equal to 9b plus 18. Now that we have eliminated our distributive property, we can see that we have like terms and that they're on opposite sides, so we'll have to eliminate one of them. Well, how do we eliminate positive 9b? We take 9b away. 9b minus 9b makes 0. 0 minus 6 is just negative 6. What we do to one side, we need to do to the other. So 9b minus 9b makes 0. 0 plus 18 is 18. So we get negative 6 is equal to 18, which is a false statement, which is called a contradiction. And that implies that there is no solution. There is no value of x that you could ever insert into this equation to make the equation true. Again, in this example, we see the distributive property. So we'll take the 3 and multiply it by every term inside the equation, inside the parentheses. So we have 3 times a, which is 3a. 3 times positive 6, which is positive 18, and that's equal to 18 plus 3a. I just brought that down. Now we see we have like terms on opposite sides, so we have to eliminate one of those. How do you eliminate 3a? Well, you subtract 3a. 3a minus 3a makes 0, so I get 0 plus 18, which is just 18 subtract 3a from this side since we did it to the other side. 3a minus 3a makes 0. 18 plus 0 is just 18. So we get 18 equals 18, which is a true statement. A true statement is referred to as an identity, and that implies that there are infinitely many solutions. In fact, you could put any number in there for x and it will make that equation true. Now, we're going to look at an example where we combined all three. This equation has the distributive property. It has like terms on the same side, but it also has like terms on opposite sides. So we see all three pieces here. Simplify starts with the distributive property, so we need to take that negative 2 and multiply it by each term inside the parentheses. So I'm just going to bring this side down, so we have 2a plus 2 plus 4a equals negative 2 times 13, which is negative 26. Negative 2 times negative a makes positive 2a. Now that we've eliminated the distributive property, we need to combine like terms that are on the same side. 2a plus 4a makes 6a. So we have 6a plus 2, all I did was bring that 2 down, equals negative 26 plus 2a. Now we no longer have like terms on the same side, so we need to eliminate one of the two terms that are on opposite sides. Again, I like to look at the smaller amount and take that away to avoid having negatives. 2a minus 2a makes 0. 6a minus 2a makes 4a. And everything else gets brought down. Now we no longer have the distributive or like terms, so we can use a do and undo chart to simplify this equation. If we knew what a was, we would times 4 and add 2, so we'll have to subtract 2 and divide 4. So we subtract 2 from each side, we get 4a equals negative 28, divide by 4, 4 divided by 4 is 1, so we get 1a, or just a, equals negative 7. Negative 7 is the value of the variable that will make that equation true.